Okay, third section of chapter seven, trigonometry and modeling. And here we're looking at the double angle formulae. Now these can be derived by the addition formulae by, so derived from addition formulae by replacing uh, B with A. So you know we had things like sine um, A plus B, which was going on there, sine A plus B. Well, if you just make that A, you'll have sine A plus A, which is sine 2A. Obviously, on the other side, you'll need to replace um, the uh, what you had as B with A as well. And then you get these double angle formulae here. Double angle because whatever angle is here, it's doubled on this side. The same with cos. Now, cos comes in three forms, three flavors. Uh, this is the one that you get from the addition formulae. But if you use um, sine squared plus cos squared is one, you can use it to generate these two here. Yep, and the, and the tan one again. The angle that you see over here gets doubled over here. If actually the angle on the left hand side was A, then the angle on the right side would be A over 2. So you can think of it as a half angle formula if you use it the other way around. So when we go from here to here, so it's a double angle. The angle on the left is always double the angle on the right. But if we think of it this way, we can think of it as a half angle formula because the angle on the right is always half of the angle on the left. Okay, so in these questions here, we're looking to see if we can recognize a double angle anywhere or something that shows the pattern of the, the double angle. And actually the first one looks like the right hand side of the double angle for cos. So you'll remember that, um, I hope you'll remember that cos 2a is equivalent to cos squared a minus sine squared a. Don't confuse it with the cos squared plus sine squared. So that means in a you can write that expression as cos 2 times 50 cos 100. Uh, part B. Uh, the double angle for tan, so tan 2a, would be 2 tan a over 1 minus tan squared a, and it fits the um, the pattern. So uh, that's the same as tan. 2 times pi over 6, which would be pi over 3. Okay, it doesn't say right, it just says write it as a single trig ratio. Okay, we've done that, so we don't need to work out what pi over 3 is. Now, the last one 4 sine 70. Now, that sec, if you bring it to the top is the same as cos 70 right so we should recognize that sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a okay now we've got four sort of sine a so we could if you multiply both sides of this by two then you'd have two sine two a is four sine a cos a 
So we don't just have sine 2 times 70 or sine 140. We have two lots of it, 2 sine 140. So we double the angle and we put a double at the front as well. OK, it's all about recognizing it looks like a, a double angle. OK, so I've been given two little statements here. X is 3 sine theta. Y is 3 minus 4 cos theta. And I need to eliminate theta and basically end up with an expression with X and Y. Now, since this is a chapter on double angles, this bit here is dying out and saying, expand me, expand me. Right, so cos 2 theta, we can write using a double angle formula. Now we've got three choices. We've got this as a squared, or we've got this, or we've got this. So I'm sorry, that should be 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So which one are we going to choose? Well, if I choose the first one, uh, doesn't really help because I'm still going to have cos squared. And can I get rid of cos squared using the other equation? No. Same with the second. But if I choose the third, I'll have an expression that just has sine squared in it. And then I can substitute the first equation into this second one. So I'm going to choose the th third way of writing cos 2 theta. So first equation will become y equals 3 minus 4 and using this form of cos 2 theta 1 minus 2 sine squared theta like this and then from the first equation if I divide both sides by 3 I'll get sine theta is that that can get substituted into there theta will be gone so y equals 3 minus 4 times 1 minus 2 times x over 3 squared. Yeah, so you can see the substitution. Um, I can leave it like that if I want to. It doesn't say simplify, it just says express y in terms of x. I've done that. But I think, you know, it's nice to tidy up a bit. So y equals 3 minus, and we'll expand the brackets, 4 um, plus 8 and then x over 3 all squared we can tidy that up even more 3 minus 4 is going to be negative 1 plus and then we'll have 8x squared over 9 we can leave it like that if we want to or we could then write y equals uh, 8 over 9x squared minus 1 as r final answer yeah so you know it was all about deciding which one of the expansions are we going to use and in this case because we wanted to eliminate theta we could only do that if we could have the double angle written in terms of something other than cos sine the other equation we chose the third expansion OK, very similar to what we've done before. New improved method where we can use a cast diagram and we're going to use trigonometry and then we can use those for our double angles. Right. So first thing is. We have an angle X. And we're told that the opposite, the adjacent. Is three. The um, hypotenuse is 4, so it's not a Pythagorean triple. So I'm going to have to do the square root of 4 squared minus 3 squared. So this side is root 7. Using a cast diagram, C-A-S-T. Now this time it says, it doesn't say acute or obtuse. It says that angle X is actually could be in either one of these two segments here it's between 180 and 360. now if we look at the original question cos x is positive 
Now, if cos x is positive, the only place where it could be out of those two sections that I've highlighted is here. If it was on the other side, where t is, cos would be negative, but it's not negative, it's positive. So it has to be actually between 270 and 360. That will make a slight difference to our working. Right, so given that information, let's write down what, um, so we've got cos x is 3 over 4, sin x, well, that's going to be negative because of where we are on the cast diagram, only cos is positive, and that's going to be uh, root 7 over 4. And tan x, well, that's also going to be negative where, because of where we are in the cast diagram, and that will be root 7 over 3, opposite over adjacent. Right, so all we need to do now is plug these into our thing. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. So that's going to be 2 times sine x is negative root 7 over 4 times by cos x, which is 3 over 4. So that's going to give me negative 6 root 7 over 16, which will simplify, divide both of those by 2, negative 3 root 7 over 8 as the exact value of that. And for part B, tan 2x is going to be 2 tan x over 1 minus tan squared x. So that would be tan x is negative root 7 over 3, negative root 7 over 3 over 1 minus negative root 7 over 3 squared. Okay, let's do it the lazy way and work that out on the calculator. No, no let's not be lazy, let's work it out. So uh, negative 2 root 7 over 3 at the top. The bottom, um, I'm going to be, if I square that, I'm going to get 7 over 9. 1 minus 7 over 9 is 2 over 9. So negative 2 root 7 root 7 over 3 times by 9 over 2. Reciprocal. 2s will cancel out. Just leave me with negative 9 root 7 over 3. Oh, I could have cancelled out with the 9s as well. Divide the top and the bottom by 3 to leave me with negative 3 root 7. Okay, so the double angle formulas are there um, for you to look at when you do exercise 7c on pages 175 to 177.